So um, I brought several different examples of things here. Some of the things that I brought aren't necessarily what I would be, say, using in a research lab, but they help to illustrate some of the fundamental physics that uh, either I would be using or that researchers in the field who do physical acoustics would be interested in. And so um, one example of a project that an undergrad is currently working on with me is looking at a bottle. And uh, when you blow over the top of a bottle, you can make it resonate. And so, on the one level, that's interesting. You can basically make yourself a, a musical instrument that way. But from a physicist's point of view, you want to know, well, how does that work? How does the tone depend upon the shape of the bottle? And how does the uh, rate at which you blow over the top of the bottle uh, influence the uh, amplitude and the character of the sound that's generated? And so this is a project that an undergrad is working on with me. Uh, at UCA. It also was part of what my postdoc was in the Netherlands. Um, that postdoc was funded by Shell Oil Company and the practical application there for this particular um, uh, acoustics project was, um, well, Shell has got a lot of natural gas wells and they need to power electrical devices down in the well to basically know temperature, pressure, that sort of thing. And so they wanted to know, was there any way to take energy from flowing gas, turn it into sound with no moving parts, and then maybe take that sound energy and turn it into electricity, okay? And you think, well, this is Holland. Why don't they just stick a windmill down there, there and turn a motor? Well, those Natural gas wells have a bunch of grit and dirt that sandblasts its way up the pipe. So anything you put in there is going to be obliterated. So this was their idea, was to put some little pipes off to the side that when the gas flow uh, 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 went over those openings, they'd make the tone, and then they can extract that energy. Worked on that for two years. That went pretty well. So that's one aspect of physical acoustics. Um, Another aspect of physical acoustics that I'm involved in uh, is in an area called thermoacoustics, and that's combining two interesting areas of heat and acoustics. And the little demo I have here is going to require me to put my microphone down. But uh, basically what we have is a little resonator. Okay, So I have a large test tube. Inside that test tube is a piece of ceramic you might recognize that if you're in uh, automotive mechanics or something. That's part of an automobile's catalytic converter. It's a nice ceramic material that's got little holes that go all the way through it. And at the bottom of that is a coil of nichrome wire. And nichrome wire is the same stuff you'd find if you look inside your toaster oven and you see those glowing red coils inside there. And so that's hooked up to this thing on the table, which is a uh, basically a, a little power supply. So I can send electricity to that coil of wire at the bottom. And that's where the thermo comes from. I'm going to get that coil of wire to get hot. The other side of that ceramic is going to be a little bit cool. And what you're going to see is a conversion of thermal energy into acoustic energy. So let me try that. direct conversion of thermal energy into sound energy, okay? Now, the physics of how that works is something that I would be very interested in. You also can have a situation where instead of the thermal energy making sound energy, you force sound energy into the resonator. And when you do that, you make one end of that ceramic hot and the other end cold. And so you essentially have a refrigerator. Okay, that's a thermoacoustic refrigerator. There are um, physicists at Los Alamos Labs that 
do that very research to understand how they can take natural gas and then liquefy it and be able to transport it rather than just burning it off and wasting it. So the physical principles there involve the generation of sound from heat and sound back into basically thermal energy. So those are two of the main areas that I'm involved in. That's and I right. could keep going. You're going to have to stop me. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we go on down the line and we'll come back to you because the there's more things to demonstrate I'm seeing. So we'll come back to that.